Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. This sector will consume up to 90 million ounces of silver by 2025. Wow. Let's explore. The shiny metal that you see before you here is about to increase in its demand, pulling away from other areas of industrial and technological uses. According to this report by the Silver Institute, just released here a few days ago, automakers today are increasingly relying on silver to enable the vast technological advances incorporated into modern vehicles. This has resulted in another powerful demand center for silver, with projections of nearly 90 million ounces of silver absorbed annually in the automotive industry by 2025. Uh, this will rival silver consumption in the photovoltaic industry, which is forecasted to be 98 million ounces this year alone. And currently the largest application of global industrial silver demand. To provide a better understanding of silver's important function in the automotive sector, the Silver Institute uh, created a market trend report uh, called Silver's Growing Role in the Automotive Industry, which is produced uh, on its behalf by Metals Focus. You've heard me actually refer to some of their reports uh, in the past on this channel. It examines in automotive production, including the evolution of hybrid and battery electric vehicles. It also addresses transportation policies that favor vehicle electrification in some of the world's most important vehicle markets. The report provides an analysis of silver automotive demand in a range of vehicles and the growing importance to silver demand of ancillary automotive services. And not only that, you know, more cars these days are becoming essentially moving computers and sensors and the like. All of that requires uh, the uh, role of electrical components and silver plays a key role, but also copper as well, too. That's very important to uh, keep in, uh, in mind here. And so there's an assessment of current forecasted silver demand in automobiles through 2025. And so the summation of the report is that it's silver's widespread use in automobiles reflects its superior electrical properties, as well as its excellent oxide resistance and durability under harsh operating environments. Silver is used extensively in vehicle electrical control units that manage a wide range of functions in the engine and main cabin. Some of those functions include, among others, uh, infotainment systems, navigation systems, electrical power steering, and vital safety features such as airbag deployment systems, automatic braking, security, and driver alertness systems. So the average silver, vehicle, uh, silver in these vehicle loadings, which currently estimates 15 to 28 grams per internal combustion engine light vehicle, have been rising over the past few decades. Now, keep that in mind here, 20, 15 to 28 grams, that's about the amount of silver that's in, a, in one solar panel. In hybrid vehicles, silver use is higher at around 18 to 34 grams per light vehicle, while battery electric vehicles, which are also known as BEVs, are believed to consume in the range of 25 to 50 grams of silver per vehicle. So that's what we're moving towards electric vehicles for sure. Um, the move to autonomous driving uh, should lead to a dramatic escalation of vehicle complexity requiring even more silver consumption. Silver automotive demand this year is projected to be 61 million ounces. And so we're not even, we're just over halfway there now, but it's going to increase for sure. Ancillary services that require silver are also increasing, which includes charging stations, charging points for electric vehicles, and the acceptance of a battery electric vehicles is gaining momentum as an increasing number of countries adopt policies that support the BEV industry. 
In fact, many of them are saying by 2040 that there will be a ban on ICEs, which are um, internal combustion engine vehicles, and that includes in the United States. And uh, each stage of the transition from ICE to hybrid uh, vehicles to battery electric vehicles and eventually to autonomous driving. Uh, it'll be a net positive for silver demand for sure. Here we can see from this graphic some of the selected automotive electrical and components and also some applications that would definitely involve the increased amount of silver used uh, in our, the cars of the near future within just a few years. And as you can see here, silver automotive demand is creeping up uh, exponentially here uh, quite dramatically. In fact, it was only in 2020 we saw a slight drop, mainly I guess because of the pandemic, but auto sales certainly did increase in 2020, but uh, we see it uh, growing pretty steadily up and through the uh, halves of the coming years here with the projected of up to 90 million ounces in 2025. And with that increased demand for silver, as most analysts can agree, prices are likely to increase in the coming years. And I believe they will as well. That also means it's going to be more lucrative for silver mining companies out there and also companies that are in the business of discovering and finding new sites to drill and mine for silver. And that brings us to the sponsored portion of the video. Uh, by Kalinex, who is exploring Canada's most prolific base in precious metal districts. They are um, in the business to discover and develop base in precious metal rich deposits within established Canadian mining districts. They have a long history here, starting out as Kalin and Mines back in 1927, before splitting many years later so that they can focus on base and precious metal rich deposits as Kalinex. And that means that they are laser focused on this area and they've already had some success in discovering in several, several of these sites uh, deposits of silver and base metals. But a company like this that is still relatively new in this area, uh, it tells you a little something about the health of their company when they have a $35 million market cap, no debt, and over a half million dollars cash on hand. And I think that's profoundly important when you take a look into the health of, this, of companies like this, when you do your own due diligence and research of them. But also should be worth noting that it's pretty important that small companies like this have so much money uh, almost 30% of it invested between management, friends, family, and associates. And that is quite telling for a company of this size and how much they believe in the company, for sure. And it also tells you much about them when they have uh, award-winning Hall of Fame geologist on their site as well. And it is the uh, something to be said about some of these sites here. We have New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and, uh, and, and also the Bathurst District here. And, Man and then there's Manitoba. And some of these sites are the safest, most mining friendly that you can find. They have a low risk of government and communities pushing back. And many people in the area rely on mining for jobs and taxes for Canada. And so a lot of these places, they have made some pretty significant finds already in some of their uh, deposits and some of their highlights here, as you can see here in some of these areas here, like in Manitoba. And then we have other areas of discoveries as well. Their website talks about some of their projects where they've made some of these discoveries, but really where you can find information about that is in their news release section that they have outlined some of this. Now they're just recently just posted here, Kalinex announces soil sampling results to follow up on silver discoveries at the Nash Creek project in Bathurst Mining District, New Brunswick. But you can see here that there is other areas, especially the year-end letters to shareholders where they talk about some of the new discoveries and other past stories here that tell you 
uh, the progress that they have made. And it's certainly important, but it's also of great greater importance to understand any kind of um, investment into a company like this, that there is risks involved for sure. And so it's incumbent upon us to do our own, own due diligence when looking into companies like this and to ask questions. You know, they, I'll post a link to this website below where you can make contact for any inquiries that you have by phone, email, or this form here. And I'm sure they'd be very happy to answer your questions um, about what they do and the discoveries that they have made. You know, for many of us here that watch this channel, most of us are into the physical precious metals, but uh, it is an area of growing. I've noticed many of my viewers have started to expand out um, in other areas of of uh, putting in, of in, actually investing in silver, and they can do that um, by buying ETFs. They can buy silver mining established silver mining companies, the big ones, or slightly riskier options like this where there is a high risk, high reward, especially in this particular case, where we've seen some of these shares have been seeing a great momentum. Uh, they've been up more than 700% in recent months. So it looks like the momentum is an upwards trajectory for Kalinex. So that's something to consider, but also with the understanding that uh, there is risk involved. And, but that being said, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and how this affects the automotive industry as well, because I believe we're gonna see it, uh, and the companies like Kalinex are out there to find the silver to meet the demand. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch, and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.